fear, fear, and more fear. And outside the president's rally in Portsmouth, New Hampshire today, this was the scene. Wild Bill Hickok shows up. What's going, what, what is this guy's program? Can it get any worse? As a gun owner, as a guy who loves to hunt and fish, as a guy who has spent 30 years in the Midwest with that kind of a lifestyle for the life of me, I can't understand why somebody would show up at a presidential town hall meeting, whether they're inside or outside, with a gun on. That is psychoactivity is what that is. Don't you remember the story, folks, down in Atlanta when a prisoner overtook a guard and went in and shot the judge and other people? How do we know that gun owner today just could protect that firearm so well that he knew that nobody was going to come up and grab it and start shooting people? It's happened. It has happened. Who says? make more of this than it deserves, but this is just in from the city manager's office and the chief of police's office in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where the president was involved in that town hall today. You saw somebody with a uh, bearing a firearm into that event today with a license. This is a separate... Well, just about an hour and a half. NBC's Ron Allen is live there with the details. Ron, good to see you. How are you, Carlos? Um, Ron, so, so apparently there's fairly significant, almost disturbing news. Let us know what's happening there in New Hampshire. Well, things are peaceful. There are perhaps several thousand people here in front of the high school, and they are lining the road up to the high school. People for health care reform, for lack of a better way of describing them, on one side, people against it on the other side. Things are very, very orderly. But let me clear up one thing. There is a man in the crowd who has a, a gun, a handgun, strapped on his, on his lower leg. And I asked the chief of police about this. The chief of police says that he, he's, he's, it is legal for him to have the gun as long as it is not concealed. It's a registered weapon, and what's more, the man is on private property, a church ground there at the end of the, the roadway, and the church has apparently given him permission to be there. The police are obviously keeping a close eye on this man, and they're not going to let him get anywhere near the president, and I suspect that he won't be here by the time the president gets here in just a couple of hours' time. But again, for the most part, things are very but, but, peaceful. But, but Ron, the police are keeping Ron, an eye on, on things. On the crowds are separated. But, but to be really clear, we're seeing the pictures right now. You're saying a guy has a gun in the open uh, where we already know there are concerns about every president's safety, but certainly... Uh, yes. This historic president, the 44th president of the United States, and there's, there's no, uh, the guy's just being allowed to stay there, is that right? The guy, the, the chief of police here, I just, I just asked him because I was amazed by this too, but apparently the law allows this man to be here as long as the gun is not concealed. It is registered to him apparently, and he's on private property, this church ground. There's a church uh, right at the, at the top of the roadway that leads into the high school, and the chief of police said that the, the church has given this man permission to be there. Now, the authorities are well aware of him. They're, they're, they're keeping a very close eye on him. Um, I'm going to check back again because, of course, this is obviously something that a lot of people are going to be amazed by, but that's the way the law apparently works here in New Hampshire. Um, I, I will bet you a lot of money, though, that by the time the president gets anywhere near the state of New Hampshire, that this man and his gun will be nowhere near this high school. I, I, I cannot imagine that there aren't enough lawyers in New Hampshire that can't file some kind of emergency injunction, but I, I'll, I'll leave that to, to the lawyers on the ground. Ron Allen in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, thank you. We certainly will be returning to talk to you. As about an hour, we saw the president boarding Air Force One just moments ago. Now to today's provocative daily topic. You know, it's August. The president's poll numbers are tumbling. He's about to be greeted in New Hampshire by hundreds of protesters and one guy with a gun. So looking ahead, what's it going to take for Obama to have a successful fall? We're going to take a look at four potential presidential tipping points. Ari Melber is a correspondent with The Nation, uh, joins me right now. Ari, good to see you. Good to see you. Ari, I, I, I can't even get to your tipping points until we talk for a moment about this guy with a gun in New Hampshire. We saw pictures of him, so this isn't some, you know, mystical thing. What do you make of that? I think it's really odd. I mean, when I traveled on uh, then Senator Obama's campaign plane, there were tremendous clearinghouse services. I mean, we would go in hours before and everything would be sniffed by dogs, and they had tremendous authority, as best I could tell, being there, that the service, Secret Service working with local authorities to sweep, to clear, to remove people, forget holding a gun. Uh, the service would work with local authorities to tell people, you're too close to the facility, the president's coming in several hours later. So this struck my ear as odd. I don't know whether the law in New Hampshire is somehow different. Gene Chesky, I'll tell you what I think. I was disturbed uh, when I saw President Bush in Iraq and saw a guy have enough time to take one shoe and throw it in him and then a second shoe. 
And I said, you know, I don't care where you stand politically. I don't want the President of the United States being in such a position that some guy has enough time to take two shoes and throw them at a point blank range. You think about the split second that it would take to draw that weapon, and it's just incomprehensible. And when Ron Allen said, well, I'll bet you a lot of money that by the time the president gets here, that guy will be nowhere to be found, my question is, why can't we get rid of him now? And, and not only that, I've got to be concerned, and I think everyone's got to be concerned. I mean, yesterday I had my editorial, my daily editorial, the C-Note, and I said that I had some concern about language. I, I love that we're doing the town halls. I love that they're spirited. I love that people are voicing strong opinions, but I thought that in some cases we were crossing the line, and my concern was that words could turn into actions, and those actions in some cases could be violent. And I, I've got to worry now, when you show some guy on TV, out in the open, with a gun on his leg, that's going to have a ripple impact. It's not like other people aren't going to watch that and, and in some cases maybe model that. You've already got a situation that's polarized, as it was described. People for health care on one side of the street, people opposed on the other. It would take very little to tip that situation into a dangerous one. I, I think it's difficult. Story: The city of Portsmouth announcing the arrest of Mr. Richard Terry Young uh, for carrying a loaded pistol without a license, also a misdemeanor offense at approximately 9.40 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. Mr. Young, it says, located inside of the high school where he was detained by the Secret Service, arrested by uh, the police for that offense, carrying a pocket knife, a search of his vehicle, police. He's got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. Portsmouth say parked on school property revealed a loaded gun. That is the mugshot of Richard Terry Young arrested today. That is the basis for the second charge in addition to those offenses, according to Portsmouth police. Uh, Randall, uh, Richard Terry Young, rather, is being investigated by the U.S. Secret Service for possible federal crimes resulting from the same series of events. Uh, bail had not yet been set, and Mr. Young, according to the Portsmouth Police Department, remains in the custody in New Hampshire for apparently carrying a pocket knife in to the senior high school in Portsmouth, New Hampshire at the time of the president's town hall today and then having an un unlicensed firearm in his vehicle as well. If there are further updates, obviously, we will keep you posted on them. To this point, no one congratulates themselves on powers of perception when the sinking feeling that there is racism at some of these health care town halls proves true, when the suspicion is borne out by an obvious display of hatred, not to suggest... ...to bear arms, both colliding at health care town halls. Contessa has the reporting. What's yeah, going on? Dylan, police in New Hampshire headed off what could have been a dangerous situation here inside or outside the president's town hall Tuesday. They arrested this man, Richard Terry Young, on weapons charges. They say he walked into the event with a pocket knife, and inside his car then, they found a loaded gun, which Young was not licensed to carry. They also say he did not have a ticket to attend that town hall. No word on what, if anything, he'd been planning, but the Secret Service is now investigating as well. Another guy who grabbed a lot of headlines here in the Granite State yesterday, William Kostrick. He was caught by television cameras protesting outside the Portsmouth Town Hall with a gun strapped to his leg. The sign he carried read, it's time to water the tree of liberty. And it added to the controversy because the sign paraphrased Thomas Jefferson's quote, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Kostrick apparently left the protest peacefully before the president even arrived. And then he faced off with Chris Matthews. Why did you bring a loaded gun to a public meeting? Well, here in New Hampshire, uh, I know is, the law. You can okay. chew gum at church. You can do it. You can ride in on a pogo stick. There's a lot right. of things you're legally allowed to do. Why did you bring a gun to a meeting with the President of the United States, given the violent history of this country with regard to presidents and assassinations? Why did you bring a gun to a public event with the President? 
Well, you know the history of this country. If you love this country, you know it's history. Wow, you know we've I, had I, a I, problem I, with people with guns at presidential events. Mm -hmm. Why'd you bring a gun to right. an event I, with the I, president? I do, I, I do know history, and the, the history is that uh, our forefathers fought for the right to keep and bear armed, and they believe I, that I know every person that. should be armed. Everybody knows that. You brought a sign that said the tree of liberty has to be watered with the blood of tyrants, and you're carrying a goddamn gun uh -huh. at a presidential event. Yeah, I think those that's, things that's make people not... wonder what you're about. I, you got to just love that, right? I mean, Chris Matthews was not giving that guy an inch. Police asked Kostrick to move back from the school property, but they said because the gun was in plain view, he was within his legal rights to be out there with the gun strapped to his leg. And then there was this at a health care meet and greet in Arizona. A protester dropped a gun just a few feet from a Democratic congresswoman. Apparently it slipped out of the holster. Police say the whole thing was an accident and that the protester once again was licensed to carry a concealed weapon. But with all the anger, you know, it's 